Why hello, you people from Earth and outer space. It is I, Alexander from the universe. In this episode of Let's Rust, we're gonna look at various different print macros. Print macros, in the previous episode we had variable bindings. And a variable binding can be really nice to have, but how nice is it if we cannot print it out? There are an amount of different print macros in Rust. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the print line one, the one we've been using for the previous episodes when printing things out. And a print line can contain any kind of text in a string. For example, we've got the hello world one that we've been using before, uh, that when we run it, do the cargo run, we get a nice hello world. And now we could change this into anything here, like seriously, anything and print it out, it's gonna say anything. Now, what if we had a variable binding that we wanted to print out? Let's create one. Let x equals four. That is not part of the Fibonacci sequence. Five, <laughs> so much better. Uh, what we can do is use something called a placeholder inside any type of print. So we're gonna, gonna do a start curly brace, an end curly brace, like so, we've got a placeholder, that's a placeholder, right there. And then after the quote, double quotation marks, we're gonna do a comma and fill it in with some arguments. The argument's gonna be X. And the X is gonna link up to the first placeholder that it locates inside the print line. So if we open up our terminal and we do the cargo run again, it's gonna say five. It prints out that number and now besides this, placeholder, we can have a other text. For example, the bind in X is ta-da, like so, and we, we run it, it's going to say the bind in X is five. Holy pinata, that is beautiful. Now, there are some more print macros. There is the print exclamation mark, which is another print macro. We're tapping hello world in here and then do another print line after that, uh, like so. Type in holy, I can't spell pinata correctly. Where's my thing? Like, hold on. Pin, pin, no, not like that. It's like that. Oh, come on. <laughs> I really want to type pinata. But but it ain't working. Pin 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 ya ah, ada. Like so, there you go. Holy pinata. And if we run this now, it's gonna say the binding X is five, hello world, holy pinata on the same line. The reason this happens, this rod here, the two last print be on the same line is because the print line automatically appends a new line after it. So after it executes, prints this out into the console, it also puts a new line there, a line break. So the terminal jumps down one line and it starts from the hello world. Then since that's a print, this ain't gonna append a new line to it. So meaning that whatever comes after that, the print line, it's just gonna print out starting on the same line. Now, if we were to print something underneath this print line here, guess what? Even if it's a print line, doesn't matter. It's gonna be like, hey man, you pushed me off. Like so, and, and we're like that, and boom, it pushed him off like a mean man. And all of a sudden we have wonderful functionality out of print statements. But what if we wanted to print multiple values? Like, what if there was a battleship at some location in the ocean? Uh, let's say we have a, an X and a Y coordinate, like so. Define them quickly. Go for like uh, 1321. Then the battleship is located at coordinate, placeholder, placeholder. So X here is gonna to correspond to the first placeholder it finds inside this string. But what corresponds to this placeholder? Well, we gotta add the Y coordinate as well. So 
The first one corresponds to the first placeholder, the second binding corresponds to the second one. If we're to run this now, we're gonna get the battleship is located at 1321. Oh man, <laughs> two semicolons. Watsu could do this, <laughs> like so. It is not, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not really efficient, is it? You gotta, you gotta use the correct amount, which is one. <laughs> It's meaningless otherwise. Technically, it's not meaningless, but I mean, it's just a bit overkill, really. <laughs> there is another print macro. There is one last one we're going to discuss in this episode, and that's the panic. Panic panics. Is that is that obvious? <laughs> so let's say we have the battleships located at, <laughs> and then all of a sudden we have something down here. We have a print line like so. Say in. Uh, hello world but then all of a sudden we kind of want to something happens here like right there something happens here and what is it that happens well it's a panic because because the program wants to panic I wish to panic he's like and all of a sudden when you run it it's gonna panic panic is used for error handling like when you have something that who generate an error, you make it panic. And uh, it panics at, I wish to panic, because that's a string right there. So rather than printing out just the message, it prints out the message in this form, thread main, panic that, I wish to panic, source main r7. It panics right here. So this prints out the message here, and then it closes down the program, meaning the hello world here, that's never gonna be reached. And that's only part of it. Print macros all build on the same resource. There is something called format in Rust, which is the reason we can add placeholders to strings like this and then print them out using variables like this. And there's a lot you can do with that. Not only print binance out, but you can do really cool things with it. But we're gonna save that for another time. <laughs> Why goodbye, you people from Earth and outer space. Feel free to leave a comment stating something either hilarious or perhaps even a like. Until next time.